Hello, hello, and welcome once again to Shifting Religious Concepts. We are SRC. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Anal Archie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. We're pleased to be here with you today for a novel look at the Bible and what it means for all of us. We're excited to bring you the third broadcast of the Willie Lynch and Blinded Mind series. My name's Mark Thomas. I'll be moderating. Anala D and Archie Sanders are here with us by the magic of Zoom. Anala and Archie have both been students and then teachers of the Bible for many years. Anala is an author, a publisher, a writer, and a speaker. She's also served as an ordained minister. And Archie has pastored for over 20 years in Virginia as an ordained minister. So they bring lots of experience to our conversation and a unique message of who we are spiritually. They are here today as contributors, but also don't forget, after many years, they shifted their religious concepts. So a few things for our audience before we start our presentation. Please keep your microphones muted uh, during the program. This is necessary just to keep down, uh, keep the confusion or uh, background noise down. Uh, SRC does, though, want you to ask questions live and on the air. So if you'd raise your hands, we'll try to answer those real time in today's program. But there's also a chat feature. So if you prefer, you could always uh, just text in questions or comments. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. We thank you for your help in this regard. So uh, let's talk about the SRC series now, this uh, Blinded Mind and the Willie Lynch speech. Anala, I think you have some uh, basic mm -hmm. concepts audience come with some uh, takeaways absolutely first let me say good morning to everyone all the participants that are on today we are so happy that you are here and yes our takeaways today are knowledge plus imagination equals power at the end of these series at the end of this series you would understand what a mind is and how it is defined and you will understand how can a mind be blinded. You will understand the difference between the mind and the mind's ego, and if they're the same, and then you will learn how to train your mind. You will determine, we will determine if it's possible to train your mind. Those are the takeaways at the end of this series, what you will walk away with if you stay tuned. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so, okay, so now if you brought your Bibles, today we'll be focusing on Hosea chapter 4. Uh, but I know the panel has quite a few other scriptures they're going to be referring to in this series. So, listen for the concepts Archie and Anala will present. Often they will break a scripture down or define a word and so reveal what SRC thinks of as hidden concepts in the Bible. Sometimes it's a journey to get there. Uh, also, please remember that SRC is not affiliated or necessarily believes in any specific religion. We use the Bible not only because it has deep wisdom in its stories, but also that it is uh, where our, coll our collective past is also. So SRC knows there are many other sacred writings from all over the world, just as worthy of study. Last week, we left off discussing as you may recall, Hosea chapter 4, verses 2, 3, and 4. So Anala spotlighted the second verse and especially focused on the word adultery found there. She defined it to mean make impure or defile a person or thing. So when we think on a lower vibration, we make ourselves inferior by, in, by adulterating or making our consciousness inferior. So now we get to the panel at last. Archie. All right. <laughs> I Good got morning. a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Archie. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody doing? Great. Everybody's great. So uh, last week at the conclusion of the broadcast, you stated that the spirit is pure and remains pure. So then yeah. when we talk about adulteration in the scripture, what is being adulterated? What is being uh, made impure? Well, see, uh, I, I thought about that uh, uh, last week, and, and, and we I made a, uh, a statement concerning uh, the spirit. The spirit can't be corrupted because it is pure in itself. Uh, what becomes corrupted is the line of communication between us, our mind, our mentality, what we 
uh, state ourselves, how we think about things. It's, it's almost, as I said before, like uh, when you look at a computer, you have a CPU with the central processing unit, and then you have programs that are ran on the computer. And a lot of times you have certain programs on the computer, you wonder why it's not working, it don't act right. Uh, the drivers, which is the line of communication between that CPU and that program has been corrupted. So uh, there's nothing wrong with the program. There's nothing wrong with the CPU, but the line of communication between those two has been corrupted. So you have to shut your computer off sometime, bring it back up and establish that line of communication again. The spirit is always there. The spirit is our life force. When the spirit leaves the body, the body is no more good. It can't do anything. So uh, you have to understand that, and then I know people say, well, I have a bad spirit. They had a bad spirit. No, they had a bad mentality. The, their mindset wasn't right. It is what we are thinking. In, uh, because the spirit produces the right thoughts if you would uh, accept them. But if not, you just, your mind goes a lot of different ways and, 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 and people think that there's something wrong with the spirit. There's nothing wrong with the spirit. It's, it's us, our mentality, the way we think. Mm -hmm. So, so how does a, uh, like the Willie Lynch speech, how does that, that, that doesn't, I mean, how does that affect us when we, when we hear something that's false like that? Now, listen to what uh, Anala said, uh, adultery. Uh, Make impure or defile mm -hmm. or a, a person or a thing. What that speech did, the Willie Lynch speech, it it was 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 written to do a few things. Uh, one thing, it, it tried to make you feel inferior. That's what that speech, part of that speech was. If I could, I, I read that last paragraph. Well, the next to the last paragraph, I believe. And uh, this is to what this paragraph says right quick. And, and then you'll get a, a better idea of what I'm trying to say here about this speech. Um, the black slave, after receiving this indoctrination, shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. maybe thousands. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves and the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. Now, listen to what he's doing here. You must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust, distrust all blacks, but it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. See, the mind is, is, is powerful. But see, as I was saying, they can do it between the, that, 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 the spirit and the mind. If, if someone can put something in there to uh, upset your way of thinking, then now they are beginning to get control of you because that was the, the purpose of, uh, uh, at first was to maintain uh, strict discipline for uh, uh, slaves and then put that inferiority in there. So see, we, 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 we got to understand the mind itself and the spirit, you know, a lot of times you hear people say, I'm going to break your spirit. No, you're not breaking the spirit. You're breaking my way of thinking, my mentality. You're, you're instituting within what I know and, and how I think. So if you could get my thoughts all messed up, I won't even rely on the spirit. I think that the spirit is bad. The spirit isn't bad. All right. Anala. First, let me just say good morning to, um, we have Victor, who's our graphic artist online with us today. And we're happy about that. We also have my niece, who I wear her jewelry all the time, and she's part of our advertisers. So I want to say thank you and, and, uh, and welcome to uh, those two people who are online with us. And also, I know that my sister's here today. So I just want to give her a shout out and say that we're glad that all of you guys are participating with us today. 
Before yeah. I go back and uh, talk about and respond to what my what Archie just talked about, let's pull up the definition from mine. You know, as we do in SRC, we believe in sharing a definition of words. So I'm going to share my screen for a second, and we're going to go and look up the def look at the definition for the word mind. Just a second. Okay. So mind, the element part, substance or process that reasons, thinks, feels, the will, perceive, judges. So it's the totality of conscious and unconscious mental processes and activities, intellectual power or ability, a state of awareness. I want you to keep that in mind when we're talking about the blinded minds, because as Archie mentioned, the Willie Lynch series or, or speech served to blind your mind so that you could not truly be aware of who you are. And so how does that affect people? Because last week we talked about, we wanted to get back into talking about blood touches blood. Now, some people may not have ever even read the Willie Lynch speech, but it didn't matter because when the person that read it, when you read that speech or heard about that speech, you started to see people in the way that the speech described them. And that's how the blood touches blood. And I, and I gotta share the screen one more time or you know, some more, but I want to go back and look at the word blood and, and understand how that touches blood, how, how blood touches blood. But before we do that, let me just go back and read the scripture to you again so you can remember what that scripture said. It says, and that's in Hosea 4 verse two, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. But you remember last week we said that it had nothing to do with a, a man or a woman committing adultery with, a, with each other. As Archie mentioned, as I, we mentioned last week, that is about putting something impure into your mind, into your knowledge. But then how does blood touch blood? Let's look at the definition for blood so you can get an idea about that. So just a second, we're gonna share our screen again. And we're going to look at the definition for blood. Okay, so now we talked about that blood is the vital principle, it's life. So when we're talking about the blood, that's what keeps you, that's what animates you, that's what gives you life. But look at the other definition that no one ever talks about. Blood is also can be defined as a person or group regarded as a source of energy, vitality. Now, I want to talk to you and share with you what that means. That means blood touches blood. So that means that whether or not you have read the Willow Lynch story, the fact that I'm thinking about it, I'm vibrating that energy into the universe. I'm vibrating that energy so that every time I see someone, just like the description that Archie read, I'm going to see those people just like that. Regardless, as I mentioned last week, regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, we are all linked together. That's how blood touches blood. You gotta think about this. Our creator, our conceiver, gave us this blood, put this blood within us. Therefore, all the blood that's running through each of our veins is linked together through the conceiver. We were led that adultery was just about having sex, but it wasn't about that. It wasn't about just having sex and getting diseases. It has nothing to do with that. But if you believe and focus on that worldly concept, it could be true for you. So what blood touches blood does for us is it provides an insight and understanding that we are connected through blood. Each of us are connected through blood and generate or vibrate sources of energy, positive or 
negative. And that's what Archie was talking about when he told us about the Willie Lynch speech, because that speech that he read or that was written caused each of us to see each of us or see other people that way. And whether you see, whether, whether you read the speech or not, you started to see people in that manner. And I just want to say right up front that SRC, here we choose to see every person and everything in the good. If we're going to allow in our focus, we don't, we don't see anything as bad. We see all the good. Because once you allow, once you put your consciousness or your focus on something that is perceived as not good, then you continue to get that in your world. So, so it propagates like that. Is that what you Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. That, that when you if, you, if you read something like Willie Lynch, then regardless of whether the next person you talk to read it or not, you're still influent, you're, you're still putting that word out into the world just by, just by virtue of having believed the Willie Lynch speech. But your energy, your energy, because we're all linked together through the source of energy. So therefore, you're bringing that energy into your yeah. world. Yes, absolutely. That's why, you, you know, uh, and we're going to, when we get into the next uh, verse three, you're going to see how true that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Archie. Well, well see, see, uh, and, and we have to go back. It, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad we started out with imagination, uh, how imagination works. You got to understand something. The... Egyptian philosophy, uh, the 10 virtues that are listed, the first three are thoughts, speech, and deed. If you can't control your thought, your, your speech, and your deeds, then someone else is, is a, you know, you ever seen people, you know, who coming up, even now I know with some grown folk, uh, when a certain person walk in the room, all of a sudden your whole demeanor change. Oh my God, there's so and so and so. I can't stand them. I can't. They are controlling you. They're controlling you, 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 the, the first three virtues that 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 we have is is that thought, which is silent, and and and, and then the speech when we say something, and deed is when we take action. So that speech sort of got hold of that, and and as Anala say. When, when people even heard about it, didn't read it, they just heard it. Now, all of a sudden, they're, they're allowing that to control the way they think, the way they talk, and their deeds. First three virtues of, of, of Egyptian philosophy. That, that, that they, we don't think of, of those things because most of the time, you know, we're not concerned with that. But, but yes, there are virtues that we have, and some smart people, with PhDs and all this stuff, have got some, some good education, they use these things against us. And, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to mention too that, you now I don't want us to go around thinking that just because, you know, that that vibration is around, that it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna be in your world, as Archie mentioned. All kinds of thoughts can be in a room. But light mm -hmm. thoughts are gonna come together. Light thoughts are gonna come into your world. So what we must do it's practice having good thoughts, as Archie mentioned a few minutes ago. Right. Okay. Archie, got anything else? No, that that that's that's important uh, because it, every time I say the word virtue, I think about the virtuous woman. They always say the virtuous <laughs> woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But but uh, lo and behold, there are virtues that that we have and that we should really focus on, so that as an I'll say that we can think properly. Right. So that, uh, this applies to uh, verse three. Is that not right, Anala? Absolutely. Uh, let's, let's read verse three before we get into it. So <laughs> verse three of Hosea four says, therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yeah, the fishes of the sea all shall, also shall be taken away. Now, when I read the scripture when I was younger and I read this, I thought that, oh my Lord, you know, no more fish and, you know, we, you know, the world is going to be destroyed. <laughs> but that is not what this verse is talking about. Now, go back and I remember that we just talked about 
uh, blood, uh, blood right. touches blood. Now, one of the things that we didn't do is I don't think that we talked about the word touch. And I just want to go, go back on that for a second because the word touch is very important. And let me just bring the screen up for just a second because I this is going to be very important when I talk when we talk about verse three. So let me just share the screen and go to the word touch so you can see what the word touch means. It says to come into contact with and perceive to affect as if by contact to affect with some feeling or emotion. So see, a lot of times we think and believe that we just gotta, like this gotta touch this, but it has nothing, it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to touch a thing. You can perceive a thing as if feeling it. And that's what is going on right now when we're talking about, therefore the land mourns. Not only are we as individuals connected, Everything is connected in the universe. Everything, the trees, the animals, the birds, the fish, everything is connected. And this is why right now and throughout history, we have seen the universe, the earth go through some stress. I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I've noticed that there have been huge trees. You know, I, I, I love going hiking. And when I go hiking, I'm surprised at the big trees that are just falling over. And if we think about what's going on right now in our universe, there's so much negativity, so much energy going forth that is also affecting the universe. I would, I would almost say that even what we're seeing with the coronavirus is a result of the energies going forward in the universe. But we can change this if we awaken to who we are. That's so important to awaken to who we are so that we can start to not only correct ourselves, but have the universe correct itself as well. Okay. So, so uh, basically that we're all one. I mean, that, uh, that in, in, at the moment of creation, when when everything was created, we were all created as one, not just people, but in but everything. Well, yes, but I, I do want you to understand that. Don't get me wrong. We are we don't have the DNA of. I mean, we don't. We're not an animal, but we were all we are all connected through the life force, which mm -hmm. is our conceiver. So therefore, we we can't disconnect ourselves from what's the universe, what's in the universe. We cannot disconnect ourselves from that. So therefore, when we put out that energy, think about this, guys. We have dominion over the earth. That's what the Bible told us, that we have dominion. So how are we exercising that dominion? Are we sending forth good vibrations and love? Or are we sending forth fear, negativity, seeing people like the Willie Lynch speech told us we should see people? All of that affects everything. Mm -hmm. This 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 may uh, 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 clear up a, uh, a a little something right here. Let me let me uh, read to you what Doctor. I tell here I go with the name again. So y'all just that's okay. <laughs> Doctor Sobunfu Song. Listen to what she says about the spirit of intimacy. Now I now I'm just said some things about nature. Now watch what she says. Spiritual. Inspiration's purpose is to bind us in such a way that we maintain our connection and not only with ourselves, but also with nature. Spirit helps us fulfill our own life's purpose and maintain our sanity. Spirit is the life force in everything. Spirit helps us accomplish our life's purpose and maintain our connection to the cosmic spirit world. Like I said before, uh, spirit smells, sees, and touch by us. That by us, by us. You, you know, spirit don't have a nose. Spirit don't have an eye. It don't have have hands. But we are the eyes, mouth, nose, and hand for the spirit. So it allows us to connect. That we we we're back again to the the corrupting of what the real true pure thing is 
and what allows us or, or, or corrupts that, that, that connection. That connection is there. Now I'll say, you know, she, 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 she hikes a lot and she watch what happens in nature. You know, we, we are connected, y'all. Uh, I think you just said, Thomas, that we all uh, are connected. We are connected. Uh, uh, by, everybody has access to the spirit. That doesn't mean uh, that they have activated it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like having a million dollars in the bank and don't even know it's there. And it belongs to you. You just don't ever go get it. It's, it, it the spirit is it's, it's there. Uh, okay. you, you see what I was now saying about touch? <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I know y'all probably heard the song saying, he touched me. So uh, <laughs> what did they talk about? There's nobody around him. Who, you know, within your spirit, you know, you touch. By, you, you you know you could touch me with something you say, mm -hmm. you know, and, and 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 individuals understand that. As I said, the smart ones they take what they know and the words, and they know how to to get to us and move mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Before we move on, Thomas. Also, I just want to share one more thing. I want to share the screen again because I want to share a definition that I didn't touch on before, and I think it's very important that we touch on it. Uh, you're going to find that some of these definitions that we uh, talk about here and i think it should be on the screen i hope it is yeah here it is right here <laughs> it's so little I, it was hiding from me listen the when the scripture when it says by swearing and lying and all that i didn't give you the definition for by but i want you to look at it now someone would say why on earth would you look up the word by it's because <laughs> when i'm instructed in a download to do something i'm obedient to doing that thing and by was one of the words, and I kept saying, I don't need to look up by, but when I looked it up, it surprised me as to the meanings. And Archie talked about last week that there are so many definitions to a word, but think about this. When people put something in a book, they normally give you the definition they want you to see, but there are other definitions. So when you look at by, you're thinking, oh, well, by me doing this or by me doing that, I'm doing this to myself. I'm the one, you know, I'm the one lying. I'm the one swearing. No, listen to what by mean in this text by means near to or next to to and beyond the vicinity of from the hand <laughs> mind invention or creativity of so by doesn't necessarily mean that you've done anything the only thing it means that you perceived it in your mind that you thought about it that's what by can mean. I wanted to step back and share that because I think that is very important when we're talking about using our mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to move on to verse four. Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, so verse four, and we're still in Hosea. Yep. Verse four mm -hmm. said, Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. For thy people are as they strive with the priest. So you take that text and you think about the fact, you start to think that, oh, well, you know, you, 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 uh, you're not treating the preacher right. That's not what that means. Before we go on, first, let me just go back. Well, I'm just going to say this. When you think about a priest, that is a person that's holding an office. That's exactly what it is. Like we have an office in this world. We were placed in this office, in this universe, to do certain things. We all have a purpose. And we all were sent here with a purpose to do a particular thing, which is the office that each one of us holds. And it's very difficult uh, when I look at everything that happens in my world and think that, you know, that I'm linked to, to what I see. And, and, and it makes you think about well, what am I here for? Because all the stuff that's going on around me, how can I stop that? How can I be, how can I, I make changes to that? But see, the off, this, this scripture here, let no man strive nor reprove another. First, we have to understand who we are and the power that we hold within us before we can even hold this important office. Because when we start to, judge someone else and got negative things to say about someone else those things we are doing 
to ourselves. Look at what it says right here. Yet let no man, you know it doesn't necessarily mean man. Man is female and male, nor reprove another. That means I don't care what Archie might be doing wrong. I don't care what Thomas, I should not be trying to tell Thomas how to drive if he's driving the car. I shouldn't tell Archie what he should be doing. How many people have told you, have said to you, well, if I was you, I'll do this. They have no right. That is that is reproving someone. Now, it's nothing wrong if someone's getting ready to, you know, hit a brick wall. You might say there's a brick wall there, but you shouldn't try to reprove anybody and tell them how they should be living their lives. Because when you do, you are doing it to yourself. It's like a boomerang that you send out that comes right back to yourself. And I want to prove this to you. I want to, I want you to go to Matthew 25 and 40, if you would like to. Uh, I think that that would help you to kind of see the point that I'm making right now. Matthew 25 and verse 40. And let's see what it says. It says, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Now, see, people always think about, oh, well, you know, I'm going to feed the hungry, I'm going to do that. But that's all good. But they don't think about those thoughts, those vibrations, the blood, touching blood. They don't think about those things that they're sending out that also comes back to themselves. Yeah, Archie, you coming? Yeah. Well, well, you, you, you know, uh, <clears throat> we have to uh, pay attention to uh, uh, something else that also is that uh, we're not to blame other people for what is going on around us. See, that's what that's what we uh, start to do when we start to the, 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 the trying to strive upon a man and reprove somebody else because now. We are, we are saying all this loom and doom that, like we said before, we really don't realize that we brought a lot of things upon ourselves. We brought it all. <laughs> but we want to hold somebody else accountable for what we should be accountable for. Uh, you, you see where Anala read, went and read in, in the Matthew. See, it's, it's up to, see, we, we have to, be one one thing that I always uh, try to instill in my children is the accountability. You are accountable for what you do. I don't care how innocent you you say you are or you don't. You say I don't know. Go to court and say, well, judge, I didn't I didn't know that law existed. Oh yeah, you didn't. Well, you should know. Mm -hmm. Or you, you uh, that's okay. You don't know, but now you know. Or you you have to. Be accountable yourself. It's just like us now. We're trying to, to help people to understand, uh, shift their religious concepts the way uh, 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 from just depending on or ho hollering up in the sky saying, come on down, Lord, come on down. No, th there are some things that, that you are, are, are able to do that we neglect to do, and then we'll look around and say it's because of something that somebody else did, just like that, that, that speech. That speech have a lot of people still believing in that, that, you know, all those things that 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 man wrote, uh, they caused a lot of people to to to, to be messed up in life or or they're always blaming some other uh, uh, uh person or some other color or some something to keep them from going forth and actually taking a look at what it is that we should be doing ourselves. Uh, we, we, we just want, we need to connect as, as uh, Mark was saying before we all connected. Yeah. You know, that's why I, I look at that, that, that tower of Babel. A lot of people say that, yeah, all the language was confused. Yeah. Not, not just, the language was confused. It was us being able to work together and build. That stopped. There was somebody that it was a message there, and maybe we'll get to that somewhere along the line. But there was a message there that 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 stopped certain people from working together and going higher. See, but if we were confused, just like that letter, that letter messed you up. 
that speech will mess people and, and it's still messing people up right now because they have not taken the time to look back and see where this really came from and, and what what was instilled in it. We, mm -hmm. we got to really do some searching and some digging. Right. And, and you know, in verse four, uh, that in, in, in verse four, we are taught not to strive. And I'm gonna say strive means not to contend, to be in opposition, to be in competition. How many people are in competition with each other? We're taught mm -hmm. not to do that. And that's what the word strive actually means. Um, not to reprove means to criticize or correct someone. We're taught not to do this because when we do this, we are really striving with ourselves because we are the authority. We hold the office. We are that priest with that authority. We are though that God, uh, not the uh, absolute, not the conceiver, but we are a God. And, and people don't want to believe that. And when you don't believe that, that's how you, 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 you're not fulfilling the office that you have. And, let's go, and people say, well, I, I just can't get into that. I can't believe that. But look at Psalms 82, verse 6. Psalms 82, verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of your children of the Most High. So the, the scripture just told you who you are, but because someone on this earth, the willing and speech, and other people have said that you are sheep that need to be led. Some people said that, you know, you are a grasshopper. Then you believe that, we believe that versus believing what the truth is. And when we do that, we are adulterating our mind with an untruth. And so how can you hold an office when you don't even know you hold the keys to even get in to the office that's impossible you can't do it then so this verse reminds us that we are gods not the creator or the absolute but god's just the same this scripture tells us that we are children of the most high and when we wake up to the fact of who we are we'll be able to use the power that is within us right and and to remember that everybody around you is also a God and treat and, and keep that in mind when you communicate with them. So treat them as such, in other words. That's so, right. When you look at a person, you should see the God in them. And that is, that is very important, uh, Thomas, that you would say that. Look at, and regardless of what a person is doing, you don't, don't look at them and see and, and say, oh, what they're doing is bad. Or, you know, they shouldn't be doing this because now you're criticizing. Now you're trying to reprove someone. And when you do that, it's a boomerang that goes out and comes back to us. And look at all the stuff that's been created in your world. You want, we, we want to create something great. Stop doing, we got to stop doing that. We got to we even, listen, we even got to stop criticizing Trump. I tell you, I know people don't want to hear that. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> but, when you, but when you send that out, you're going to get it back. You're going to keep seeing more of that in your world. Oh, I don't I want more of that. <laughs> you don't want more? I don't want any more of that. Focus on something different. I promise you, you'll get it. I promise you. You, you know what? Prove me wrong. That's what I'm asking everybody that's, 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 on, that's in our, our, our audience today. Prove me wrong. Start to focus on what you want to see in your world. Focus on that. And see, don't you see that in your world? Prove me wrong. You can't prove me wrong. So you just br broke the law and all. You brought up politics. You weren't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just brought, brought up about the fact that we should see everybody in the way that you want to see your, the way you see yourself is the way you should see everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that includes Trump too. We're, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, pretty much near the end of our show here. I think uh, we need to get to our parting, what we're going to, our parting uh, word for the audience. Uh, Anala, you're going to just kind of tell us a little bit about next week. Uh, well, yes, I'll do that. But, uh, I, you know, do you want to uh, let, let uh, Archie go in and kind of summarize what we well, did this week? And... I don't know that it matters which, which, which we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so people can remember before we go and take them on okay, to the next Archie, week. You, you want to just summarize a little bit what we talked about today? Just a minute or two. Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm a, I, like I say, I, I enjoy what we're doing, and uh, I believe that we are helping people to to step outside the box and and think a little differently about what uh, what and who we are. Uh, 
I know it's a little strong, uh, the language is a little strong, but I'm sure most people heard it's stronger language than what we're using when we, and, and when, we, when we refer to us being God. And we're not saying demigod. We're not saying the absolute spirit that actually brought everything into being. But we're, we're saying that the, the, it's right there letting you know that you have the ability. It's there if you will use it, if you will connect and stay connected to the life source and, and, and uh, think right. You got to think right. That's what I believe that. Uh, 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 that's why we look up words and uh, try to get you to understand, you know, that, that uh, I tell people that, you know, the Bible was inspired by, was written by men that was inspired by God in the beginning. But look how many men done touched it and, and put their hands on it and did what they had to do. It took 800 years for them. Can you imagine 800 years for them to just allow people to read the Bible? So can you, we've been, and we haven't even lived, we haven't lived that long, but there's a lot of time that has gone by. So what we're trying to do is try to get you to, okay, stop. Look where you are. And, and, and start to thinking differently. Get out of that box and start to thinking differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Great. Anala? Oh, and, and next week, you know, stay tuned. And one, one another reason why you want to stay tuned is because we have this contest going on. And it's going to be an ongoing contest because we are not here, as we always say, we are not a church. We are not a religion. But we want you to walk away. Because if you know, if you walk away with the knowledge that's been downloaded into us and that we are giving to you, the world that we live in is going to be a much better place. So therefore, stay tuned. Uh, go on face, go on our, our, our YouTube and go on our Facebook and like our videos and things like that. Because at the end of this series, you will have, have an opportunity to win a $20 gift card, which will come in the form of a cash app or PayPal. So you want to stay tuned to all of these episodes and learn because we're going to ask you to send us a one-page summary on what you learned and all those things and next week we're going to be talking about verse five when we come back and hopefully get to also verse six of Hosea 4 we're going to break those two continue to unpack the fourth chapter of Hosea down to verse six and so because we want to get to the point of how does people how are people destroyed because of a lack of knowledge so that's what we're going to go to in Hosea 4 on next week. So uh, verse 5 and verse 6, we're hoping to break down. So you want to be here to continue to get the knowledge that SRC is bringing to the table. Okay, thank you. And from all of us here at SRC, we want to thank our audience for attending today's presentation. We really appreciate your patronage. Encourage you to email us your questions or comments at shiftingreligiousconcepts at gmail.com. And uh, don't forget that this presentation will be available on YouTube within the next couple of days. Just go to the Shifting Religious Concepts channel. Uh, you can watch it again, or if you have friends who want to watch it, you can share that with them. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, in one week, that's going to be on the 30th. Is that not right? Of August, we will present the second broadcast in this series at 10 a.m., I'm not the second. This is going to be the fourth. <laughs> the fourth broadcast in this series. I don't know why I never edit this right. Anyway, bring your friends and loved ones. One last thing. If you're not subscribed, go to our newsletter and go to shiftingreligiousconcepts.com forward slash registration and join us. So Also, um, Thomas, I want to say if people had questions, if they want to unmute themselves and they ha have a question they want to ask and didn't feel like typing it, this is the time to do that. Is that correct? Well, if they would, I, I mentioned that earlier. I don't see any questions yet. So I was just assuming that we answered all their questions. Just by <laughs> Well, that's people. a good thing. <laughs> so that does it for our broadcast. We wish you all peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course.